What's up, sister? It's your girl, Danielle, and welcome back to the Pretty Powerful Podcast. Uh, figuring out my own recovery and realizing like I can't allow other people's actions to affect my emotions and my decisions. Huge, huge Repeat change. that. Repeat that. <laughs> Are yeah. you, when you say heavy things, do you actually mean weights? Or do you just want to raise heavy things? No, I'm not like lifting my bike, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I should be a little more supposed to say, yeah, I just grab random boxes of things. No, it's weights. <laughs> it's so like, I, I love this though. Like, instead of calling them weights, because that sounds hard, like we just call them things. We just, yeah, just, yeah, we just lift, lift heavy things. <laughs> I love it. I am so excited to be here. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> It is so, it is so good. So my friends, if you are, when you're listening, you are in for a freaking treat because Amber is the bomb.com. And let me just, before I even give you all like, yay, look at how amazing Amber is. I just got to say, I am so excited. I've said that probably a million times already so far, but because the whole reason why I really wanted to start this podcast is because of you. Because Aww. Every time that something comes up, right, where I see posts about like, you know, intuitive eating or body image or raising girls or doing this or that or whatever, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to talk to Amber. Amber is the person <laughs> that we will go back and forth. If you have, mm-hmm. do you have the, like, if you're listening, I know you have those friends where you're like, you send 1,500 voice messages and then you think shoot she's gonna see this and think I'm insane and something's wrong but it really was just 15 to 20 voice messages of okay we got to talk about this and then I just yeah. talked about it and then you respond <laughs> back with 15 to 20 and it's just fabulous so the it's whole- the opposite I get so excited <laughs> same I'm the same way so that's where this whole pretty powerful podcast came from was we had these deep conversations and I just kept thinking, oh my gosh, women need to have these types of conversations. We need to have Mm -hmm. a safe space to just share. Like what are our thoughts? What are our opinions? What are our beliefs? Be open to hearing different ideas because you and I have different ideas and thoughts and Mm -hmm. things that we walk away just feeling so much more like, okay, we feel seen and heard. We're Mm -hmm. not alone. Mm -hmm. But also like now I have all these other ideas because Amber shared her thoughts that I didn't think before. So, and, and it's, it's also like, we don't always agree. Like, I think that's really important to mention too. Like we're, we're not always on the same page. We don't always agree. And I feel like it's so rare because we will talk and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, okay. I see your side. I see your perspective. And that's so rare and beautiful. And it just, it makes me really happy. Yeah. Same. So (laughs) my friends, like I said, you are Amber Tree. This is Amber Hanel. She is an author, a mom, anthropologist marriage and family therapy student, self-love and recovery addict for all things healing. And today we are just rolling. We have no script. We have no questions. <laughs> we are just talking all things self-love, trauma, healing, bodies, all the things that just come mm-hmm. to our minds that we just truly feel that we need to talk about. So yeah. I'm obsessed with you and I'm so excited to have you here. <laughs> so this is a pretty powerful podcast. So I would love to hear from you, Amber, a pretty powerful moment, right? So just something random that maybe in the past week or the past month or something, something positive, like a positive, powerful moment that you've experienced to just make us all think like, wow, that's so freaking powerful to just keep searching for the positive power in our lives. Have you experienced anything like that recently? Oh, for sure. I feel like you have to look, not not necessarily that you have to look for it, but you do have to kind of keep your eyes open to it. One, I want to say I'm also obsessed with you. Thank you. (laughs) Um, but I will tell you like one of the most powerful things I've seen over the course of like the last three months is a very, very good friend of mine healing, coming into her own, realizing things about herself, getting diagnoses, diagnoses, diagnoses <laughs> about it's herself. It's the same to me. I don't know. And just watching that inspires me so much to mm-hmm. be more authentic to myself and just, I keep reminding her that every time she puts something out there about her story, it's inspiring people. It's inspiring me so much. And that's definitely something I just love seeing women come into their own, realizing their power. It's just, it's just the most amazing thing to watch. 
It really is. Mm-hmm. Yes, girl. As I would tell my girls, yes, yes girl. Yes. Uh, so I love that. And I love that it just reminds us to keep our eyes open to other humans that are doing awesome things. I think we can get so bogged down with finding and seeing the negative in other humans that mm-hmm. it's so important to just like purposefully look for that positive that's happening. So yeah. And we're, we're trained so much. I hate to use we're trained, but we are, we're trained so much to look for the night. Like we get more excited about the negative than the positive anymore. And so, yeah, when you start to look for that positive and, oh man. And I like, there is toxic positivity. We all know that, but right. when you look for that beauty and that positivity, it's just really, it's incredible. And it makes you feel more powerful. Yeah, for sure. I love it. So, okay. I've been binging kind of because I was on flights and my internet went out. Of course that always happens, right? The Wi-Fi, And I was like, I downloaded the podcast. Why isn't it happening? So Amber, you have a bomb.com podcast where you are literally reading your book. Yeah. And a few things have stuck out to me that I really want to make sure that we get into here. Uh, And we can wait till later, but I just wanted to call out for a second. You talk about triggers and I loved the episode where you talk about the ice, right? And I know that was a really (laughs) hard, challenging chapter for you to read, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was just so, again, you were just talking about like how the ice triggers you and your thoughts and all the things. And so I think it'd be really valuable to share, talk about that. I love how your message, right? I want you to share in your own words, like your book and what you talk about and your experiences, but you really share, I wasn't expecting, if I'm going to be honest, okay, I listened to your podcast. I was like, I don't really know anyone, right? That personally, like in my small space that identifies, right? As an alcoholic. And Mm -hmm. I was, you know, so I was like, I don't know, like, what, what can, you know, what will I gain from this? And that sounds mm-hmm. terrible because we're friends, but that's really, I was like, yeah. I don't know. But you talk about how your journey through, through that, it's how it's yours. It's not theirs. It's not about the person that, yeah. you know, you've had that experience with. It's your journey and what you're doing, like the triggers of like what you're doing to, mm-hmm. to, ha- to go through your emotions and to get right with you and to, create that self-love. Um, mm-hmm. and so you also through the podcast share how, you know, I wrote this book so long ago and now I might have different thoughts. Yeah. So let me tell you like the, the basis behind this, I was going to do an audiobook because that's where it's at, right? We, the audiobooks are amazing, but I'm like, if I do an audiobook, I can't interact with people. I can't go back and say like, Oh wait, that was not that's not correct. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said whatever the case may be, or I feel differently now. I can't do all of that. So I'm like, why not just do a podcast where I can, after the fact, explain where I was, how I moved forward or what I would change, what I would do differently. There's so many things I would have done differently and just, yeah, it's so much better. I think to me than a, than an audiobook. But what I love about that message, though, for me, what I took from that is, you know, so many of us, we put things off, right? Even starting a podcast, mm-hmm. put it off because it, we think, what if I say something that mm-hmm. is going to offend someone? Yeah. What if I say something that later on I don't agree with anymore? You know, we mm-hmm. learn, we grow, there's new research, we have new experiences. So I might say a word now that I feel confident and comfortable using, and then mm-hmm. Years down the road, I might be thinking, why did I ever think that that was a good word to use to explain this? And so I, what you're doing is you're giving us permission. This is how I take your podcast. It's giving people permission like me to say, start the freaking podcast, write the freaking book. If down the road, you change your mind, you're allowed, you're human. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I just wanted to like applaud you for that because I think that is... I know that wasn't like the purpose of the book, but that was a big thing that I took away from your podcast that I think all of us can really lean into of you're not stuck where you are. You can try something and then change your mind and say something different and then come back like you're doing and say, actually, I don't agree with that. Or I would do this different and that's okay. I'm not the same person I was when I did it before. So -hmm. thank you for that. Thank you. Wow. That, oh, that's just amazing. That made me feel really good. (laughs) And I have to tell you, like there was one, uh, cause you know, you recorded these podcasts and you put them out later, 
but there was one where I was just like getting really heated and <laughs> after, so I, I turned it off. I'm like doing all of my additions, getting it uploaded, whatever. And I was like, that was some real Danielle energy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it totally was. I'm like, man, I was like passionate because I love how passionate you get. It's, it just makes my heart so happy. And yeah, I just stopped and I was like, Ooh, all right. All right. That was some Danielle energy. I like it. <laughs> Danielle energy. I should trademark that. No, uh, you should trademark that. <laughs> that's great. I love it. Well, since you bring up the word passion, let's jump it. Like I w- just pour it into all of everyone listening. Tell us what your true main passion, like what is your passion? When you hear that word, like what comes to mind for you? Oh man, passion, uh, recovery in all ways. Like it's that question of when someone asks you like, what could you talk about for, you know, five hours without any prompts, without any, that's it. That's it. It's recovery. Um, you know, I went through it. That's what's so difficult to get on this little tangent is like, I have a loved one that is in recovery, obviously my husband, but I didn't know that I needed my own. Like, I didn't know that. And like, so many people don't know that friends, family members, anyone affected needs their own recovery. And talking about that, that's my passion. And that is what made me start school again. Like, you know, (laughs) I'm just a professional student over here, but I'm like, I really want to do this. I want to be a therapist. I want to help people. And so that's, what's geared me, you know, toward all of that. And now, oh my gosh, I could go on and on, but now I am learning about like, uh, we can talk about this like all day, but now I'm learning about maternal, um, mortality rates, especially among women of color, which is just making me so angry and passion filled with that and fighting for women in general, but especially women of color. Like it just, it's disgusting and horrible for our country. Again, we can, we can do a whole separate topic on that. Um, but just learning about so many different things and especially in the mental health field, like that's, that's hundred percent where my passion is. Yeah. So how did, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just was going to say, we all need better mental health. Everyone. For sure. 100%. So how did you get to this point? Like, how did you give us a little bit of your back? story, right? Like I mentioned anthropology, you've written a book, you've done the things. So yeah. like, how did you get, how did Amber get to today? Oh my gosh. That's like, whew, it's longer with your, than with your passion, right? <laughs> with, with recovery. Like how yeah. did you go from studying anthropology thing, you know, years ago, and now you're here, like what were some of the pivotal changing moments that kind of got you to this point where you, you know, you stepped more into your power that maybe you didn't even know was there. So a lot of things, right? I mean, obviously my husband's addiction and working through all of that. I mean, I know there's, I know, I know there are so many people who are like, why didn't you leave? Like, this is why I didn't leave. He's amazing. He's the best person I know. And now we have a beautiful little girl and this is why, but I mean, that uh, figuring out my own recovery and realizing like, I can't allow other people's actions to affect my emotions and my decisions. Huge, mm. huge. Mm. Repeat change. that. Repeat that. <laughs> I can't allow other people's actions to affect my emotions and decisions. Mm. That's good, sister. Yeah. And it's so true because I was allowing that to happen for so long. Um, I talk in my podcast about gaslighting and realizing that I had been gaslit for years and actually what that actually means, right? It's so, oh, it's so deep. It runs so deep. Um, oh Wait, man. Okay. You, I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you there. Yeah. What, tell me more about gaslighting. Oh my gosh. Okay. So in my, in my personal experience, I was made to believe that I was crazy mm-hmm. for three years of my life. I was made to believe that I was making things up in my head this wasn't real, especially around drinking, you know, it's really, really hard to know that someone is intoxicated. They're not following through with their recovery and they're telling you over and over, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. And you're crazy. Like Mm -hmm. you need to get help. You're controlling all these things. Like you, you start to believe that, right? Yeah. 
you truly start to believe that. And so I started, honestly, I started therapy because I was like, okay, I need help. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm driving myself crazy. Yeah. Um, it is crazy making, but I started getting therapy and it was, I remember the day that my therapist looked at me and said, you do realize that you're not controlling like you, you're not controlling at all, right? You're just trying to make a bad situation better. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. I'm pretty sure I burst into tears probably because I had spent years thinking like I need to get help because I'm such a controlling person and I don't want to be that person. And it's like, no, I was just trying so hard, so desperately to make a bad situation better. Yeah. And that was a pivotal moment. Honestly, you for sure, a million times over helps me to one, find my voice, find personal development, which I never knew what that was before. <laughs> Same. <laughs> right? um, just encouraged me to be a better person and to work on myself. And that was huge. Um, you know, our journey together over, oh my gosh, so many years, so many years, like not even, I just realized like not even these last what, 10 years? It's yeah. like we knew each other at eight years old, right? Something like that. Yeah, something I don't know. Like so I weird. don't know. <laughs> it's we were so little. weird and great how like life works. It is. You know? It's so it funny. Because yeah, I do think of, you know, like the last 10 years of going on our journeys together of, you know, mm-hmm. just just life. But yeah, we have known each other since we were yeah. little. Um, like we were completely different humans. It's yeah, like- <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and we're allowed to change. And I love that exactly, about life. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's so important too, is realizing that, you know, it's so funny. I look back on like Facebook memories and these posts that I made, you know, gosh, who knows, 12 years ago. I'm like, wow, wow. I am a very different person with very different views. Yeah. And it's really cool. It's really cool. And I feel like so many people think that that is like self-admitting that you're wrong, which is a good thing. I mean, yeah. I'm happy to admit when I was wrong or happy to admit that I have grown. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. And definitely everyone should have permission to just look back and go, hmm, yeah, maybe I wasn't right. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I appreciate your vulnerability so much through, you know, you open up and share how you made the one post, you know, about starting a new year. And so if you're listening now, you just yeah. have to listen to the podcast, <laughs> sharing you. in the show notes, all the things and buy the book. But I really love listening to Amber. Just I love listening to you, you know, talk it out and, and share. It just has a different has a different feel than just reading. So yeah. I just you know, you just get really so raw and real and vulnerable. But again, I think so many people think of addiction and we always put it on the other person. And Mm -hmm. so what I think is really cool through your story and your journey is you really put it, not that you put it on yourself because you you don't put it on yourself, but you Mm -hmm. say, you know, I get to be in recovery too. I get to figure out what my triggers are. I get to figure Mm -hmm. out how, what, where I, what I think, how I feel and moving through that process to create that self-love that Amber, you talk so much about. And also, you know, we are, I know, so aligned with that women should make choices that are right for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah, here, but make choices mm-hmm. that are right for you. So I love that, you know, and you just shared here that, you know, you chose to say because he's an awesome, amazing human. And so you made the choice that was right for you in mm-hmm. the period of your life that was, you know, like it was the right choice for you. So so mm-hmm. many women think that they have to make a choice based on what everyone else around them thinks, oh, yeah. feels, the societal pressure. And right, sometimes there are plenty of times where it is important for a woman to leave a certain situation. Absolutely. Um, if she's able to and it's safe and, you know, that's for a whole different podcast. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a domestic violence shelter. So, like, that's one of my big passions. So, like, there's there's situations where that's safe and it's important to do. And then there's other times where you guys made the choice that it's right for you to stay. And it's no one else's that no one else gets to make the choice for you. So I love that you share that. Um, so openly, so we talk about self-love. So what is your definition of self-love? Self-love is loving yourself wholly, wholly right now, right in this moment, regardless of 
anything like really. And I don't know. I feel like it's become so what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like woo woo. I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but, and it's like this, it's so serious. Like it's fun, but it's so serious in the fact that it's not, it's not like woo woo. It's not going to get pedicures. It's not taking a bath. Like those are self-care items. Self-love is truly like you say, looking in the mirror and loving who you are, being proud of who you are, knowing that you have the power and confidence to stand in what you need. And like you said, regardless of what other people are saying, doing, feeling, all of it. Um, I will tell you a quick little story. I had, um, so I work at professionally, I work in the construction industry right now. And I had what we call a job walk for a project at Meow Wolf. Do you know Meow Wolf? No. I think there's one in Columbus. Okay. So you'll have to look it up. It's super, super cool. It's like all this crazy, um, I don't even know how to explain it. Look it up. Everybody look up Meow Wolf. Uh, (laughs) There's like a little section called Omega Mart. Anyway, they took us up to the second floor, which is where all the employees are. And I'm just looking at these employees who are super happy. They're all dressed. Like clearly you dress for yourself today. Mm. You dress for you girl. Like you look so good and confident. And like, I get really envious cause I don't have style. Like I just wear jeans and t-shirts. Like that's my jam. And so I look at people and I'm like, how did you put that together with stripes and polka dots and like hot pink shoes? And you just look phenomenal and you're owning it. And I guess that's another powerful moment. I just was looking at these people like, oh man, you just, you're awesome. You're awesome. And you make me smile and you're smiling and you just look so great. And that to me, it's like, again, it's not all about, (laughs) I feel like I just explained all about looks, but it's like, you carry yourself with such confidence and that's self-love to me that you are doing what you want to do. Like your freaking wedding dress dress. <laughs> Air quotes. Beautiful. Like it just, I was like, she's doing what's right for her. And then I saw the pictures of you in like the Nikes and I'm like, Oh, come on. <laughs> I love this. It just was so you and unapologetic and what you wanted, regardless of that. I think there was a video you posted where your dad sees you for the first time. And he's like, I didn't know what to expect. It's Danielle. <laughs> and Yes. So thank you for saying that. But those things can be like, those things can be hard, right? Yeah, very to hard. Go completely against and, and to go against the grain, but not because you just want to be different, but because that's who you truly are. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't yeah. wear pants. Because I was like, I want to be different than everybody else. I wore pants because I tried on so many dresses and I was like, yo, this is not me. Like this doesn't no. feel, it just didn't feel right to me. Yeah. And I tried yeah. so hard to be like, I'll wear a dress. But I was like, yeah. oh, this is dumb. What am I doing? Yeah. And then I went on this whole mission of trying to find the pants. And let me tell you, it is not easy to no. find pants for a wedding. Like <laughs> ones that like you still feel cute in, but are like, you know, so it was like this whole thing. And then the whole year. You know, I started doubting myself, like we all do yeah, when we're going through like self love journey. Is like, oh my gosh, should I make the right choice? Is this too over the top? Am I, you know, are people going to say something? Should I have done this? Should I have just, done, you know, all the shoulds that we all have. The shoulds. So you just what? should it all over yourself. <laughs> we we all should all over ourselves. We do. <laughs> so what would you tell you know the amazing humans that are listening and they're like, okay, Amber is so incredible. She's gone on this journey. She's you know she's going through therapy and self-love and now she's going to become a therapist and you know and going on this journey and you Amber are so you know confident and and I don't want to say that because when people say that to me sometimes I feel really weird because I'm like oh if you only knew right yeah, oh yeah all, absolutely we're all working through our confidence but you come across so confident and just full of self-love and I know that you have so many tips and tricks and strategies for this and you have a whole book about self-love so everyone's going to go buy it but <laughs> your self what would you say, I don't know, two, three tips if someone's on this and they're like, I can't make choices that are right for me. I struggle with that. I don't know how mm-hmm. to wear something that feels really good to me because I'm afraid mm-hmm. of being judged. Like, how would mm-hmm. you tell someone to start their self-love journey? Oh my goodness. Okay. For one, 
it never ends. Like, let's, let's make that really clear. It never, it's not like self-love is this goal that you have that you're going to reach. It's never like, it never ends. You're constantly working toward just being more loving to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's really important. You know, we say like, we're on this journey. No, we're on this journey forever and we are constantly changing. So you're going to constantly fall in love with different versions of yourself along the way. As far as what did you say? Like making decisions, man, that's really hard. It's really hard because even when you feel good, someday you're still going to have doubts. You're still going to doubt yourself and think like, oh man, I really love this, but what are other people going to think? And it's so easy to say like, it doesn't matter what other people think, Mm. but it does. I mean, we still have that, you know, we've been trained our whole lives to care about what other people think. Well, and also, I don't know if you'll agree with me on this or not, but I actually think that I am concerned about people who actually don't care what other people think. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? If you don't care, if you don't care about other humans, like that's where we get issues because you don't care about other humans. I want, I want you to care about what I think. I don't want you to make choices Mm -hmm. based on what I think, but I want you to care about what I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It is a little, it is a little unnormal. Is that a word? I don't even know if that's a word. making it one now. We're making it one now. Here we are, two college graduates, (laughs) master's degree level college graduates. (laughs) Anthropology and sociology, they didn't teach us how to say the words. We 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 did not learn. words. (laughs) English was like one class, guys. Let us go. (laughs) Um, So it's, now I don't even (laughs) know. It's not normal to not think, I think we were going with it. You were not normal. Unnormal. Yeah. To not care what people think. Like that's a completely normal human reaction. And yeah. we are all human. I mean, you're going to have days where you feel really great. And this, again, a whole other topic, but this is also why, side note, little pitch here, why it's so important to know and track your own hormones. Because if you track them and you know them, you're going to realize like the days that you don't feel so great are probably the days that your hormones are like a little out of whack in our cycle. And that's important to know because that's not your fault. (laughs) And so you can literally look in the mirror and go, I don't feel great about myself today. Dang hormones. It's fine. I'm going to feel better in three days. No big deal. Okay. Um, I'm going to get us sidetracked a million times. I love it. Okay. So, but you said if you don't track your hormones, like, you know, you don't know. If someone right now doesn't track their hormones and they're like, I don't even know what you're talking about, sister. What would like, where, where can they start with that? I know that's not like your talking about today, but yeah. Um, okay. Start with period tracker for sure. Okay. Uh, lots of apps. Like an app? Yeah. Oh yeah. What's the app I have? I don't even, I think it's called my calendar. Okay. You start with that and then just do it. I'm not even kidding you. Google a tiny bit of research on the hormonal cycle, the, um, menstrual cycle, basically. Right. I mean, that's what it is. And you can see, like, I'm not even kidding you. It's going to come up as a picture on Google and you can see like, these are the different phases and this is where you're at. And in this phase you have super low estrogen, like, okay, okay. Well, we're going to feel tired. We're going to feel bloated. We're going to, you know, all the things and that's okay. And so again, I I can talk about this forever. (laughs) And I love that we wait here with self-love because I don't Again, self love. You know, you go to Pinterest and it's like, love yourself. Don't care what you oh. wear. Bright colored hair. You know, do your nails. Yeah. And it, it, like you said, it's so much deeper. There's so. And again, so if you're deeper. trying to love yourself, and I've never thought of it. That like I've never mm-hmm. put this together. So I love that you just did this. I've never thought of self love as just really digging into like your your menstrual cycle. I'm saying, you know, yeah. I can utilize that to create more self love because if I understand what's happening in my body. Right. Like, how much power is that that I can control that? Not control, because it's out of my control, really. But I can at least yeah. understand what's happening so then I can plan life or, oh my gosh. like you said, give yourself permission to just be like, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. And again, it's like, it's super easy to find the, sorry, I don't know if you can hear my kid back there. I can't. <laughs> 
girlfriend, we've already, you, you got kids, I got dogs, I heard my dogs already, I got neighbors, they decided to mow in the grass, <laughs> you got leaf blowers going, it's fine, cool. everything's it real fine. world. Oh my gosh. So yeah, if you start to realize like where you are in that, that every single month, right, you can start to realize where you can, I don't know, take a, take a little break or again, we talk about workouts, eating, eating right, all of the things to love, because you love yourself, not like, again, I know you and I both, like we have definitely given ourselves workouts as like punishment, right? Yeah, for sure. And it's like, oh, I ate this. I need to work out. And if you just reframe that and go like your post lately about being on vacation and working out, like I had the same thought. I'm like, this person's on vacation. What are they doing? It's because I want to feel good today. I want to treat my body well. I want to feel strong. And I I just want to feel better all around. And you know damn well that a workout is going to do that for you. And that's it. I mean, just taking care of yourself because you want to be a better version of you. I love, I follow, um, I don't know what she, I don't know if she's like a um, influencer or what, Jenna Kutcher, but she talked about losing weight, getting healthy, all of the things because she wanted to feel vibrant. Mm. And so she put like vibrancy over her, um, you know, workout space or whatever. And I loved that so much. Cause I'm like, yeah, I want to feel vibrant. Like what? Yes. I love that word. For that. <laughs> I know. So that made me really feel like, yes, that's self-love is that you're not working out. Like, I don't need to lose weight. I don't need to do these things, but I want to feel vibrant. Wow. That's self-love. That is self-love. Oh, I love it so much. So much good stuff here. Like mm. all the little things I never expected us to get to. So good. Oh man. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed. <laughs> so, Okay. A couple more questions and then we're going to go into rapid fire fun questions. Oh, I so, love rapid fire. Um, <laughs> when was the time in your life? Because I like to think of, you know, we talk about being powerful, right? And I think so often we focus on how can we become more confident to become powerful in the future without realizing that we've been really freaking powerful in the past. And like our past is kind of like mm. our superpower to like, you know, yeah. if I was powerful in this moment, then that means I can be powerful again in another moment. So where, and you might've already kind of shared and touched on things, but if there was a time in your life where you would say that, like, you really stepped into your power without realizing you even did it, or, you know, you just, your confidence just like exploded. Cause maybe you had no other choice, but to take action, like when was a moment in your life and how do you feel like you actually were able to do that? Um, well, of course the ultimate moment in my life where I felt the most powerful, the most confident was when I had my daughter. Yeah. Ooh. I felt like I was, oh man, I was conquering the world. I just birthed a human. What? How? I know. What? I even felt, it was so crazy. I even felt so good about my body because I'm like, my body just did this. What? This is amazing. I and let that. me tell you, as someone who did not expect to really ever have children, I was terrified. And all I could think for nine months of my life was like, this thing has to come out of me. And I was, too <laughs> but then it was like, I got there, the process started and I just knew what to do. Mm. It was crazy. It was the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. And I felt so powerful. And I felt like I, you're going to do what I say. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it was so I don't know how to explain it. It was just like, I knew every decision I made was the right one. <clears throat> I wish I could feel that way all the time. <laughs> yeah. Because I think, I think it was more than me, right? It's more than me. It's, it's her. And I know everything I'm doing is the right thing to do. It was amazing. It felt so powerful. And then prior to that, the most powerful I felt was, um, I will make, I will readers digest version of this. Um, I was in a therapy session with my husband. He got kicked out of the therapy session, <laughs> um, because he was intoxicated oh. and my therapist said, you need to make a decision today on what you want to do. And it needs to happen today. And it needs to be your decision. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know. 
And I went home that night and I, I just went, listen, you have to go to rehab or we cannot be together anymore. Mm. And that was probably the most powerful because without that moment, our daughter wouldn't be here, but it was so powerful. And I felt so like everything clicked and I'm like, this is the right thing. This is the right thing. And I have to be okay with the outcome and I have to detach from the outcome. Whatever he chooses to do is on him and I'm detached from it. And no matter what, I'm going to be okay. And don't get me wrong. It took a lot of therapy. It took a lot of work to get to that point. But those are two moments in my life where I felt the most powerful in a very good way. And also like, these are mine. I, I, it's rare that I have felt that way where I just know these are the right decisions. I know this is what needs to happen. I'm so confident in this. And I feel like it takes those really big moments for you to realize, okay, this is right. You know, I mean, it takes really big moments and even some little moments, but the more you have those moments and make those decisions where, you know, this is what I need and you speak what you need, Mm -hmm. it's going to get easier and it's going to become a little bit more natural, um, for you to continue doing that. I mean, just thinking quickly recently, um, I know nobody that I work with is going to listen to any podcast probably, (laughs) um, but recently, you know, I was told some things that were expected of me at work and I just looked right at them. And I said, if that's what you expect, you have the wrong person. Mm. I, I'm not going to do these things. And my God, what? Like I was nervous, but so proud of myself because I have spent years going above and beyond and not getting any, anything for that. And don't get me wrong, go above and beyond. It's the right thing to do but not when it's expected on a regular basis. And, you know, you're not getting compensated for that. And I just remember saying like, you have the wrong person. You should probably find someone else. And I'm like, what did I just do? But I felt so good about it, you know? And I just laughed because I'm like, I wasn't looking for a job when I found this one. So (laughs) I'll figure it out. I love that. And it's when you shared, I was getting goosebumps, um, especially with your husband, because I, you say like, yeah, I, you know, that was powerful. I felt confident. Like I knew, but so, but at the same time, it probably feels terrifying. Oh, right? it's terrifying. Like, just like the job, right? Like, oh yeah. my God, what if we always go to like, what if, what yeah. if they do say, cool, peace. We're done with you. We don't need you then. Yeah. Bye. Then you're like, oh, cool. I have, I have a family. I got some bills. We'll I got out. no job. Great. This is great. Everything's fine. It's yeah. So but I think when you're making decisions that are right for you and following what you need and what you want, it is terrifying. Mm-hmm. It is very scary. I think about you, you know, when you quit your job with Ohio State, like how terrifying was that? Right. Yeah. But did it feel like absolutely the right thing to do? Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like that. You can be both, right? You can be both excited and confident and know you're making the right choice. And you can also be terrified and wanting to poop your pants and yeah. freaking out because. Yeah. I is. think you should feel both at the same time. Yeah. That, and, I think that's probably when you know, okay, this is the right thing. Cause I am terrified. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. And, but I also love that, you know, you, you said, Um, the more you make those types of decisions, whether they can be big decisions, right? Having a baby is like a big thing. Uh, So like, hello, Um, but it can be as simple as every day. Just, I don't feel like working out. I don't want to work out, but I know, right? Like in my gut, I know that that would make me feel good. I know it would make me feel powerful. So I get to make that decision. And every time we make those small decisions, we set more into our confidence, right? Or just like- you said the person wearing like the pink shoes, like you put on one pink shoe and you're like, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's you just, gonna... just totally made me think of this 100% when you make those small decisions, you're building trust in yourself. Mm-hmm. You're building trust, which, which turns into confidence yeah. because you trust yourself. Like that's part of self-love too. I love that you brought that up because I 
how we didn't mention that before. I don't know, but yeah, when you say, okay, I'm going to start this workout program or I'm going to walk on the treadmill every day for 10 minutes because I want to feel better. And you do that. Well, you're just building trust in yourself every single time. Yeah. Like I can do that. Mm -hmm. Like, and I will do that and I can continue doing that. And same with, you know, you saying, um, you know, I think it's interesting. So it's both, I think you mentioned, um, how, you know, with your therapist, you said, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what my decision is supposed to like, I don't know what my decision is, but then you went home and you're like, no, this is it. This is what yeah. we're doing. Um, and so do you feel like that was almost like a gut instinct that you were maybe pushing down because you didn't want to think about it or want to make a decision, but then Absolutely. when you really thought about it, you're like, my gut is telling me this is what's going to happen. So yeah. this is what's going to happen. Absolutely. I mean, I was pushing it down because it's like, okay, we have a home. We have a home. We have all these things together. At the time we didn't have our daughter, but we have all these things together. And of course that question of like, what if, what if he chooses to continue drinking and I have to leave? What, like, that's my boundary. And like, what if that have, I don't want that to happen, but what if that's his decision? And I think it just clicked. Yeah. My gut was like, if that's his decision, that's his decision. You can't let his actions <laughs> dictate your emotions or decisions. And that, yeah, it, it just kind of clicked. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be okay. I don't want this. I am terrified of this. I don't even know what I'm going to do if he does choose that route. And yeah, it was, yeah. <clears throat> I think I it was that. definitely my gut, lip, but I was just pushing it down. Cause I'm like, Oh man, what if, what if, what if? Yeah. Yeah. And I love, I think as women, I know as women, we get to listen to our guts more because yes. if we listen to them more, we would make more decisions confidently because we know mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. allow the self doubt to creep in and push down because we've been told for so long that we might not know the right answers and other people might be smarter than us and know more and do more. And so, like, yeah. We don't know but yeah. we do know what we want. We do know. Yeah. And I think there's also side note, a voice that says it's been done. It's been done. It's been done. Like that was my voice for sure. When I thought about a podcast, when I thought about anything I've done, I'm like, oh, that's been done. It hasn't been done by you. It hasn't been done by you. Mm -hmm. And when you, again, like you, it's, it's, you just start, you just start. And like that builds up the confidence muscle too. Mm, I love it. Well, I think that, I mean, mic drop, I think we can, <laughs> that's how we bring it around because you brought up again how like your emo the emotions, all the things and just how start, right? And I yeah. love that we're finishing this way because this is the very first podcast guest interview that I've had. I am so excited. I'm um, so and, excited. And so it just is like the perfect moment to be like, okay, if you're listening to this, you get to trust your gut. You get to make more of those choices, small, big choices that will lead to that confidence and lead to that self-love that everyone's preaching, but they just want to put the band-aid, right? The affirmations, the, the yeah. getting your nails done, but the real, which are all good really too, good. right? Those are all yeah. good things too. It's just not, it's yeah. not that deeper level. Yeah. Yeah. And so like Amber has shared, you know, it's making that confident choice and just trusting your gut and knowing that you know exactly what the choice is to make. Okay, so before I let you go, Amber, we have to do yeah. rapid fire questions because I really okay, want, promised you 30 minutes, but I know it's been a <laughs> We um, both knew this would not be 30 minutes. <laughs> we could be here for three hours and like still be going on because we, you know, you bring up other things. I'm like, oh yeah, we could go there. You know, there's Honestly, just, we've done pretty good if you ask me. We've done we pretty have. good. <laughs> we have. Um, okay, so quick questions. Uh, what is on? What are the main things that are on your For You page? Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, funny stories about my daughter. Um, and self-love probably. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Um, okay. So we don't believe in. Oh wait, page. for you pages, like other people's, right? Yeah. I don't know how any of this works. So it's not funny stories about my daughter. That's what I post Yeah. Well, on I'm my not. for you pages, like funny animal, it's just anything funny. <laughs> funny. Okay. You funny got animals usually. <laughs> animals. I love it. Um, Okay, we don't believe in cheat meals around here, but if you could only choose one treat special meal for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? Oh my gosh, that's a hard question. Probably pizza. Oh, do you have a any favorite? kind of pizza? Oh, any. Okay. 
I love I, all pizza. I love, I love <laughs> I'm like tacos, pizza. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I love it. We went with pizza. I love it. Trust your gut. Um, <laughs> what's one movement or exercise that you enjoy that makes you feel powerful? Um, riding the bike. Ooh. Riding a bike. Yes. I love that. For okay. Sure. Also- and lifting heavy things, I suppose. Yeah, actually, lifting heavy things is probably the better answer. Okay. Hey, there's no right or wrong answer. It's your answer. Okay, so we can do both. We can ride a bike and then lift our heavy weights. Okay. Lift our heavy things, yes. Lift our heavy things. Um, <laughs> now, wait, okay, I have to ask. Are yeah. you, when you say heavy things, do you actually mean weights or do you just I, lift I, heavy things? I do, no, I'm not like lifting my bike, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I should be a little more supposed to say, yeah, I just grab random boxes of things. No, it's weights. <laughs> you just don't like, I, I love this though. Like instead of calling them weights, cause that sounds hard. Like we just call them things. We just, yeah, lift. just, yeah. We just lift, lift heavy things. <laughs> I love it. All right. One show. You can only watch one show for the rest of your life. Which one do you choose? Oh my. Grey's Anatomy. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Who is one pretty powerful woman that has inspired you in your life? Duh, you. <laughs> oh, you stop. <laughs> choose someone else oh my gosh it's like every day the everyday woman that is living her life for the best version of herself like that's my inspiration always I love that I knew and my mom like there's so many people I could list yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that um okay what does being pretty powerful mean to you oh being pretty powerful means being authentic mm-hmm. and stepping into your own power. Mm, I love like it. This, the uh, pretty powerful has been a part of my life for how long now? So yeah. long. And I just love, and even your logo, like I just, I love the whole thing because it just looks so also that women can be pretty and powerful, right? Yeah. yeah. Both. We can have all the things and that's what it encompasses for me. I love that. If there was one powerful piece of advice, that you could leave your daughter for her entire life, what would it be? Oh my gosh. Oh, my little baby. Um, oh gosh. Live your life for you. Mm-hmm. Live it for you. Don't live it for me or your dad or anyone. Just live your life for you mm-hmm. and be you and whatever that means whatever that means. Love who you want, be who you want, be kind to people. I just live your life for you. I love that. Cause so many of us, I, we do live our lives for other people, especially all the time. So I love that. All the time. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, okay. What is, uh, a daily consistent habit that helps you step more into your confidence and self-love that you do? Meditation. Ooh, love meditation. Uh, even five minute, I know meditation. It's like, Uh, I can't be still. I can't do, you know, I know, I know, but even five minutes of a guided meditation is going to make you feel so much more calm and collected and cool. That's it. I love it. And tell me one song that makes you feel powerful. (gasps) Oh my gosh. Is this bad? Because I know she's like getting some bad press right now, but Lizzo, like, I know she's getting some bad stuff right now, but I love me some Lizzo. I don't know all the facts. All right. You <laughs> okay. Say, you not the song. Okay. You say, Somebody's going to be like, you should do more research on Lizzo. <laughs> okay. And maybe we do need to do more research on Lizzo, but right we now do. we're talking about the song. Right now, the song. And what is the song? I don't know. Feeling, feeling. Oh my gosh. Daniel. <laughs> I wish I could sing it for you, but I don't know what it is. I know. Uh, There's so many good ones. Are we going to edit this? <laughs> Sure. Or you can leave it in because how many of us actually ever can remember what the name of a song is? I can never remember, but it just, man, it makes about damn time. Oh yeah. That's such a good one. It's so good. It just makes me feel so good. And I mean, music in general just makes me feel really good, but that's how I'm like, okay. All right. (laughs) This is making me feel good. No, I got this. Yeah. Like how do you not dance when that comes on? I don't know. I know. know, Right. (laughs) All right. All right, my friend, this has been so freaking amazing and so freaking powerful. So tell our friends where people, where they can find you, learn more, hear more about your books, the podcast, whatever you want to share, 
Tell us where they can get more Amber in their life. Oh, fantastic. So my books are on Amazon and mm-hmm. it's The Expedition, which is the self-love book and Breaking the Silence, which is the book all about my journey through my husband's addiction. Um, I'm on Instagram, amber.hanel. If you want to put that in your show notes, because nobody knows how to spell my last name. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, and then my podcast is called Healing Space. And right now <clears throat> it is all the chapters of my book and the reflection on each chapter. And then after that, who knows? Who knows? I'm probably going to do some interviews and, you know, do all things healing. Why not? All the things. I love it so much. Um, All right. Any last words that we maybe didn't share that you would love to just leave our listeners with? Oh man, just try your best to be the best version of you, whatever that looks like. And I love you. So there you go. I love that. And I love you. Thank you so much for this amazing time together. I know we went over. I apologize, but like, sorry, not sorry. (laughs) Sorry, not sorry. I did not. When you said 30 minutes, I'm like, okay, Danielle. (laughs) Hey, we set goals. We achieve some. We learn from others. It's totally fine. So (laughs) thank you so much for this. You're amazing. I can't wait for everyone to hear this and to get more Amber in their lives. So friends, go subscribe, go get the books, go do all the things and show Amber some love. All right, my friend, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for having me here. I love this. I'll remind you at the end of every single episode, you do not owe the world pretty, but you do owe yourself to step into your personal power because you, my friend, are a powerhouse woman. Go out and prove it to yourself.